Hi, today let's talk about the data import from RDBMS to HDFS and HDFS to RDBMS using Scoop, which is one of the important tools in the Hadoop stack. Let's look at the quick agenda today. So we'll quickly talk about the supported databases using Scoop. We'll talk about the concept of Scoop connectors then we'll look at the hands-on of importing data with parameters then hiding the parameters using the option file and finally exporting data back from hdfs to rdbms so let's get started so as you can see here i'm all i've already opened my cloudera vm so first thing is we need to open up rdbms system and here i'm going to use mysql which is already installed. So if you do not have MySQL uh, in your virtual environment, you can take a look at my video of how to install MySQL on Linux, which is available in the channel. So let me log into MySQL. Show databases. So I already have a database called employees with these tables, departments, department employee, department manager, employees, salaries, and titles. And as, as you can see here, I also have departments too, which is similar to the department manager. Okay, so that is something which I'll use while I'm exporting the data from HDFS back into RDBMS. Let's quickly look at the count of records in some of these tables so that it gives you an idea. Okay, so I have uh, nine records in the departments table and uh, here is my structure of the departments. We'll look at departments two as well okay so departments two is a copy of departments table and hopefully it should be empty okay so it's empty so we can use it to export data let me open another tab here Okay, before we start looking at the example, let's quickly look at the concept of scoop connectors. User lib scoop lib. So scoop is installed in slash user slash lib and slash scoop. And within that you can see you have bin directory, lib directory, configuration, etc. So if I go to scoop lib, there you'll see various jars here and some of those are connectors. Okay. So why do we need connectors in scoop? If you look at the existing database management systems, those are all designed with standard SQL in mind. However, each DBMS differs with respect to the dialect to some extent which actually poses challenges when it comes to data transfers across the systems. So at a high level, scoop connect connectors are components which help overcome these challenges. Okay, so here you see we have MySQL connector, Postgres connector, HSQLDB connector, for example. Okay, so which means if you have, if you want to talk to MySQL using scoop, you need to have this connector. If you don't have this, easiest thing is to download the connector from the mysql.com. Similarly, if you want Scoop to talk to PostgreSQL, you need to have PostgreSQL JDBC.jar. Okay. Similarly, if you want to talk to Oracle, you need to have specific Oracle jar and you just need to download and copy it into this location, which is slash user slash lib slash scoop and slash lib. And that's the only thing you need to do. 
So whenever the scoop tool wants to talk to MySQL, it is going to use this MySQL connector, okay, so that it can easily understand the dialect of the MySQL. So similarly, scoop supports connectors of various uh, databases. It may be Oracle SQL Server DB2, okay, and it also supports uh, document-based systems or some of the NoSQL systems. So a complete list of that can be obtained from the Scoop website. Back to our MySQL table and I quickly want to show you the records that I have here. Okay, so as you can see I have department number and department name. Uh, so I have just nine records and other tables have millions of records which I don't want to use it's going to take some time so I'll just take this particular table and we'll progress with this example so if you want to know the options with scoop the best thing is to type scoop help it's going to print out the available options or available commands and as you can see we have import we have export which is which are the primary commands we are going to use in this hands-on so if you want more information on that particular command you can say scoop import and just hit enter it's going to print you a bunch of options available for hbase high different delimiters okay compressing options number of mappers queries and different things here okay and here you can see with import you need to specify a few things mandatory things like the connect option the password username of the db okay scoop import connect I'm going to give my JDBC URL to connect to MySQL MySQL localhost that's because MySQL is running on the localhost here next is the database name which is employees next option is the username of the DB then the password and the next option is the target directory which is where the data is going to be pulled and stored in HDFS from MySQL okay so I'm going to give a full path here user Cloudera departments and finally the table name I want, uh, want to specify here which is there in MySQL departments okay so that's the table which we are going to use hit enter So as we discussed in the first video, Scoop is going to create a specific class, for example in this case departments.java, so which is going to encapsulate all the required fields and the various mappers that are going to be used in the import by Scoop are going to use this particular class which is generated from departments.java. Okay. Similarly, for the export also, it's going to generate a specific Java file with the table name and that is going to be converted to a class file which is then used by the import or export mappers. Okay, so in this case, it has created Java file and then converted that to a jar file which will be finally used by the various mappers. And if you look at this map reduce here, uh, initiated by the scoop 
it had found nine records and finally it had pulled nine records okay so let's now go back and see okay so i'm going to just do a cat of this okay as you can see here one two three four five six seven eight nine so these are the records which were pulled from the mysql db simple isn't it so let's now move to the second option of importing data from the mysql back into hdfs using a secure way or using a parameterized file so it's it's always not secure to type the username password directly on the command line every time you go want to import this okay so a better way exists and that is by using the parameterized file so as you can see here i have created import.txt which is going to contain all my commands so basically i have import connect options database username and password okay so from the next time you don't need to specify any of these except your table name that that you want to import and the location of hdfs into which this data need to be put in let's now use this option scoop and i'm going to use hyphen hyphen options file from cloudera import.txt table departments target directory user cloudera departments two okay and i can also specify number of mappers that i want so by default scoop runs four mappers so if i want i can reduce them okay so i can just say hyphen m and let's say two mappers okay there's a mistake here target directory okay so as you can see it has transferred using the two mappers so that you can confirm using this statement here okay let's quickly confirm the data here hdfs dfs hyphen cat okay so nine of those got imported here and finally let's look at how to export the same data of the nine records into a new table in my rdbms so in this case i'm going to use my departments table which has the same structure as the departments right and is currently empty okay so here i'm going to use the export option scoop export connect jdbc mysql localhost employees so i'm going to specify my table in mysql which is departments 2 and export directory from my hdfs location okay so i'm just using the entire command line just for the sake of completeness but you're free to use the parameters file it actually you should be using the parameters file in all of your examples so our command looks fine let's fire it up
okay so it says it has exported nine records it has actually launched three tasks mappers and here as well you can see it has created a specific java file after looking into the metadata of departments to table and then it has created a jar and using this jar each mapper is going to read specific number of records and upload into the rdbms now let's go back and check it here and as you can see we have the nine records exported without any issues that's it folks for now so in the next upcoming videos we'll look at some advanced functions of our of how to execute your own query right or splitting up data into multiple aspects incremental imports increment incremental exports and so on so stay tuned and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel thank you